Hi, this is Mori reporting from Berlin. And in this video, I want to follow up on the stacked bar chart we did last time and create this stacked area chart, which is not that different from a stacked bar chart. And yeah, since we haven't worked with areas or these path elements uh, you can see here before, I thought it would be a good idea. And I also added this button here, uh, which says add data, which creates a new decade in my data set here. Uh, yeah, to uh, have some more funky waves, I guess. So yeah, stay tuned. So in this video, we will just be creating a copy of the stacked bar chart component we did last time and modify it so that it becomes a stacked area chart component. So to give you a quick recap what happened last time, uh, we were using this array of objects uh, for different decades and values for avocados, um, bananas, and eggplants. And we were using this data or passing it to the stack or stack generator function from D3 to transform the data we have into uh, layers. So uh, instead of uh, using objects for each decade, we were using arrays for each fruit or vegetable. There was now an array or layer for avocados, a layer for um, bananas, and a layer for uh, eggplants. And each layer uh, started where the last layer had uh, left off. So uh, we were then using these layers we got from the stack or the stack generator function down here to create uh, three group elements inside our uh, SOG, one for each layer. And we were then populating each layer with five rectangles. So one rectangle for each sequence in each layer. And uh, the goal now is not to render uh, a rectangle for each sequence in each layer, but to render a single path element for each layer so that we have one connected uh, blob in the end. Now that we don't want to create five rectangles for each layer, but only a single path element, we actually don't need to group them anymore. We can just now create a new path element instead of a group element and remove this entire part we have down here. So uh, we now will create a single path element for each layer and then define uh, the D attribute of uh, that path element to define its shape and uh, form. At my elements tab, you can now see that we have three path elements in our SVG, each having a different uh, fill color. So to define the shape and form of these layers or uh, areas, as I've shown them earlier, we have to import something from D3 called uh, area. And uh, this will help us uh, define uh, the D attributes we need here. So let me demonstrate uh, how that area function works by going down here and saying const area generator because uh, the area function actually returns a generator function which will then receive our um, layer with the five sequences to give us back the shape and form of uh, that path element. And then we have to say area and actually define three things. The first thing we have to define is the x attribute. And like I said, the area generator function will receive uh, our layer with the five sequences. And this is where we have to define, okay, for each of the sequences in that layer, uh, what is the X coordinate going to be? And the X coordinate is going to be uh, defined uh, by the year of that sequence. And that year we have to pass to our X scale, which transforms years uh, or decades into pixel values on our uh, X axis. And that is why we have to say, sequence data year. And that's it for the X coordinate. So unlike line charts that we have worked with in the past, uh, where we only had a single Y coordinate for each X coordinate, uh, we now have two different Y coordinates for each X coordinate, so a lower uh, Y coordinate and a uh, like higher Y coordinate. And to define these two Y coordinates, we have to uh, define them here by saying y0 and y1. So y0 is the lower end and uh, y1 is the top end of our uh, area at any given point or uh, yeah, sequence. So let's start by defining our y0 coordinate, the lower end of our area at any given sequence. And that is why we have to pass the current sequence here as an argument for this function and return the y position uh, or the lower y position of uh, our area at that sequence. And uh, here we can just say y scale and pass the first value of our uh, sequence. 
So I hope you remember what a sequence is from the last video because it is just a simple array containing two values, a range of values. And if you look at the avocados here, for example, they have the ranges from 0 to 10, 0 to 20, 0 to 30, and so on. These are just raw values, um, like ranges of raw values. And we are passing now the lower end of that range to our uh, Y scale to get the lower end of our area at any given sequence. And to define the top end or the higher end of our um, area at any given sequence, you just have to do the same for Y1 and say, okay, don't return the like first value of that sequence, but actually the uh, second. So now we have an area generator, which is capable of handling an array of sequences in a layer and uh, transforming them into uh, the D attribute of a area path element. And uh, that is why we can now pass the current layer of sequences uh, that we have here to our area generator by saying area generator layer. And uh, this expression, we can actually also write like this, which is by just saying area generator. And if I save that, you will see we have an area chart. So um, there's still these gaps here, but uh, we're going to fix them uh, right away. So these gaps we have right here are happening because of two different reasons. The first reason is uh, this padding we have right here. So if I just remove that padding, you will see that we have eliminated the left padding, but we still have this huge gap on the right side. So uh, the second reason for this gap we have right here is actually our scale band itself. And like I said in the last video, the scale band is splitting our x-axis into equally wide bands for each decade in our data array. And if we now pass a value or a decade to our x-scale, um, the x-scale or the scale band will actually return the very left edge of uh, that uh, band. And that is why 1980 is represented actually on the very left edge of our SVG and not where the tick is. And 2020 is represented by the very left edge of this band we have right here. So a scale band is actually really good if you're working with the bandwidth of each of these bands. And that is what we actually did when working with these rectangles. We defined the width of each rectangle uh, based on the bandwidth of uh, yeah, each band. And uh, yeah, now we have to make use of another scale, which is called scale point. And let's see how that looks like. So the scale point is actually very similar to the scale band. The only main difference is that uh, we don't have any bandwidth anymore. Like the name suggests, the scale point splits our x-axis into five points. So one for each decade. And that is why we don't have these gaps anymore. And to curve these areas as you have seen them in the beginning, I just have to go to our area function here and say uh, dot curve and pass one of the many curve functions that D3 provides. I will just use curve uh, cardinal. And if I save that, you will see that our areas uh, will be curved. One thing that you might notice is when I add some data here, the order of these layers can change. And that is because we are applying this uh, order, stack order sending, which is basically telling, okay, uh, the layer with the least total is always going to be on the very bottom. And uh, because I am adding random data here, uh, now uh, actually the avocados have surpassed the bananas and that is why they are uh, like positioned on top of the bananas. So uh, that is just uh, something that is happening currently. But if you don't want to have that, you can just remove this uh, order function here and that will cause the order to stay always uh, the same. Uh, if you add data. But if I remove the avocados and add them later, they will be stacked on top. So yeah, just keep in mind that the stack order ascending function from last time is making sure that uh, if we remove the avocados and add them back, that they return to the same position. So uh, just keep that in mind if you want to remove that uh, order function we have here. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, I hope you learned a thing or two. Let me know what you think and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.